may or may not remember me covering the trough of Disney and Pixar ripoff movies a while ago now, but I simply couldn't let it end there. Disney doesn't completely own the animated market because companies like DreamWorks exist. With famous hit movies such as Shrek, B-Movie, Kung Fu Panda, that's a hell of a lot of valuable, and not so valuable, and recognizable mindshare for people to tap into and monetize. For all the great and wonderful things computers have allowed us to achieve, one of the more unfortunate outcomes of anyone and their grandma being able to get hold of video rendering technology is that cash grab rip off films like what you're about to see are able to be squirted out in junction with popular movies to ride off the success of other properties that people actually love and enjoy. Not this. Now I have to warn you, what you're gonna see in this video is not for the faint of heart. The last time I made one of these videos I lost a good friend who watched them all with me because he couldn't take it and he died. So this time I had to find a new friend to watch them with. And again, he couldn't take it and he died as well. So this time I've asked for a little bit of help to share the load. No, the responsibility of covering whatever these things are gonna turn out to be. There are a total of nine movies I was able to find that all ripped off DreamWorks animation that equate to a grand total of 7 hours, 25 minutes and 39 seconds worth of misery condensed down into this video. Not one of these films should ever be purchased, let alone watched to the very end. They even say that this challenge has driven some men to madness. So to help stave off my almost inevitable insanity, I've acquired the assistance of three other YouTube movie channels, meaning I will cover six of these films and the guests will cover the rest. And don't worry, I did still watch every last one of them, which you'll be able to see my reactions of in the accompanying trying to watch for this episode, if you still really want more after this is all over. So I am proud to announce that joining me for this grueling task will be Chris Stuckman, Adam from Your Movie Sucks, and Ralph the Minions Loving Movie Maker. I think that's his name. But which one of these nightmare films are they gonna cover? Well I'm gonna leave that as a little surprise for later. So let's quickly introduce the candidates before blasting straight into this. Blasting our heads off with a shotgun, am I right? First off, we have two B-movie ripoffs called Plan B and Little B. Little and Big Monsters, which was cashing in on Monsters vs. Aliens. Chopkick Panda, which is quite obvious as to what it's stolen from. Life's a Jungle, Africa's Most Wanted, which is a Madagascar mockery. And Ant's Life is kind of Ants by DreamWorks and A Bug's Life by Pixar, so that's a double dipper right there. Moses de Prince Oz... I Egyptian, which is just German for the Prince of Egypt. Ratatouille is another double dip on Pixar's Ratatouille and Flushed Away. And last and possibly least is Puss in Boots, A Furry Tale, which if the really clever name is anything to go by, there's gonna be a bloody riot. So with all the chess pieces in place, may I welcome you to the Not DreamWorks Collection. This was even more miserable than the Disney one. I have no idea which order I should choose to do these in, so I'm just gonna throw them in a randomizer so it can decide my fate for me. Okay, so little and big monsters. Right, I'll spin this wheel as well to see which YouTuber has to cover it. Great, I will start us off then. Little and Big Monsters is brought to you by the Little and Big Monsters over at Video Brinquedo. The same people responsible for other movies featured in my videos such as The Little Panda Fighter, What's Up, and two or three others in this very video. I do get them mixed up with Bright Spark Productions who basically do the exact same thing in the exact same way. So they're pretty much impossible to tell apart. They're equally terrible. They all seem to use the same animation software or something. And whenever humans are involved, they just reuse the same character models. Basically, you could watch a clip from any of them and you'd find it really hard to tell them apart. <laughs> Do you think that's even possible? Immediately I was annoyed just by looking at the box. It looks like a child's project from school. And the synopsis on the back is filled with adjectives like wacky and goofy. Like, do the scientists really have to be both wacky 
and goofy. Also, notice how accurate the last few words are. What a fun mess! Take out the word fun and it'll be spot on. The thing you learn about these kinds of movies is that you can recap them in a handful of words. But at the same time, they have the miraculous ability to turn a paper-thin, empty premise into 45 minutes of running time. If we need food, we can receive bananas from Pluto and onion rings from Saturn! And I know 45 minutes might not seem like that long, but trust me, when you're looking at this... Swallow these, salty peanuts! What's the matter with you? For more than 30 seconds, those 45 minutes start to feel like 45 hours. The story of this movie is that two scientists, who remember are pretty wacky and goofy, who have somehow managed to spread some conspiracy that in the 50s they saved the world from a monster or alien invasion or something. We're still pretty traumatized by the images of that film showing how you fought off those terrible aliens during the infamous invasion of 54. But in fact, they didn't actually save the world and they lied about saving the world for some reason. They'll find out the whole lie. Monsters don't exist. We invented everything. Meaning that when their experiments lead to monsters showing up, they don't actually have any idea what to do about it. Through some truly dreadful antics, they discover that the monsters can either grow or shrink, depending on if they eat sugar or salt, respectively. Eventually, some aliens show up and say they're really sorry, but the eggs these monsters hatch from fell out of their ship when they're flying over Earth. So then the aliens just help them beat the monsters. The end. There's a nice bit of torture in there. And some scenes that probably shouldn't be in a kid's movie. But overall, I gotta say, this one probably isn't as bad as the other Video Brinquedo monstrosities, but it's obviously still the least worst option. Seeing as this thing comes from Brazil, I guess either all the audio is dubbed because none of their mouth movements even remotely resemble what they're supposed to be saying. I bet the antenna's already picked up messages. Or they just didn't bother animating complex mouth movements because that would be hard and require work. And Video Brinquedo don't like doing work. Yeah, but... what? To highlight what I mean about these movies having these never-ending scenes that feel like they go on for eternity, the start of this has a scene that goes on for such a long time that they actually have to look at a clock on the wall and say that they're running late because they sat around talking for so long. Smile every day. Oh boy, the antenna! We're officially late! We've got to get out of here! And they're just spouting exposition that's so obvious that it completely defeats the point of why you have dialogue in the first place. Can't you just fix it without making such an awful face? Today's a huge day and nothing should spoil your years of research. Today's the inauguration of the intergalactic transmission antenna. Let's boogie. I mean, obviously I wasn't expecting anything from little and big monsters. What'd you say there, kid? I can't hear ya! Kill yourself. But what I can't figure out is why they even bother to write anything at all, regardless of how much effort was put in. The point is, effort was put in. Someone did put pen to paper and get this made. Like if I was forced to make one of these, I'd put way less effort in than these guys do. It's not a very good money-making con, is it? When you'd have to spend a considerable amount of time writing down a stupid story with awful dialogue, paying voice actors, editing, printing plain white discs with the movie title on. Out of all the money-making cheeky schemes that exist out there, they didn't exactly choose a very easy one, did they? I'm really gonna try my best to refrain from ref referring to these things as movies, kind of an insult to the art form. I guess I'll just call them videos, because they're more akin to the kind of stuff you'd find on YouTube more than anything else. And even that's an insult to the people who make 3D animation content on YouTube. Like there's plenty of that stuff that's a way higher standard than what's available in these, and it's free to boot. The most enjoyment I got from monsters that were little, um, what's it called again? Who cares? Was just looking for weird glitches in the animation. Oh, oh, there's one. Oh, that, that, that looks pretty weird, doesn't it? God, this sucks. How lazy can you be? Breakfast will be ready in... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Come on, let's spin the wheel again. I'm already fed up with little and big monsters. Okay, so it's... Life's a jungle. And it's me again. Great.
Life's a jungle might be the best thing I've ever seen. I had to import it from the USA because I guess we don't want it in this country. Maybe it's illegal to own. Oh, I hope it's not illegal. Hey, open up! You better not have a copy of Life's a Jungle in there! Oh no! From the get-go, everything about it is a betrayal. It betrays you into thinking that it's Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. Meaning that this came out in 2012, which is kind of a betrayal in quality animation in and of itself. Just for comparison's sake, that's the same year as Brave, Wreck-It Ralph, and Rise of the Guardians. And you haven't even seen how this looks in motion yet. But you're probably gonna scream for your life when you do. I know I did. Another betrayal is the running time. On the back it says it's 70 minutes, which sounds fine. I've sat through much worse than that. But then when you open the case, on the disc it says it's approximately 88 minutes long. Seems kind of weird that they're different numbers, but whatever. But the real kicker is that the true running time of this film is 100 minutes. That's one hour and 40 minutes long. That's longer than Madagascar 3. Let's take a gander at the video itself then. Oh, Jesus, it's all coming back now. The main character is a ripped Jack Russell who wears tight shirts to show off his muscles. Isn't this great, my boy? For the first section, I thought his name was Poop, but it was just the terrible voice actors trying to say Pip. Pip! Pip! Come here, boy! He's called Pip, and he's English and posh and spoilt. But one faithful day on an African safari with his Bunce family, he gets lost and has to learn what it means to be a true animal. Okay, so let me pause this so we can unpack it for a moment. Oh, oh, mama. The voice acting is so bad. Not just in performance, but in voice quality. Oh, fuck. That it actually makes me want to tear my own ears off so I never have to hear anything ever again. I've never been to Africa myself, but I guess it's nice to know that the background noise is so stunningly beautiful, layered and rich. Wait, why does this say that it had a $230,000 budget? Did they put the comma in the wrong place, or had too many zeros, or what? So with poor Poop knocked off the Jeep, we transition into a four minute long flashback. Which might not sound like a lot of time, but in movie terms, that is a really, really long time. But we see how lovely Poop's home life was. Poop did poops in his toilet just like a human, had luxurious meals cooked for him in his PlayStation 2 graphics kitchen. There's even a 21 second long long shot, which shows something so incredibly epic that you simply must see it with your own eyes. Just incredible. Poop has woken up from his lovely dream by the cat from the Talking Tom app. Life's a Jungle is the worst film probably ever made by anyone, ever. Life's a Jungle is the worst film probably ever made by anyone, ever. The animals can suddenly talk now, which is fun. That's fun. Out here, a cat can put you in the doghouse. I especially like the big cat's really quiet, cowardly voice, and how it's supposed to be intimidating and, and cool. You're on the wrong end of the food chain, boy. Poop winds up with a couple of hyenas. One is the dumb one, and one is the really cool and epic leader, who we all want to have as our fursonas. We are not dogs, newbie. We are hyenas. Poop uses his quick wit and superior intelligence to worm his way into the hyena gang, who test his worth by making him retrieve a fish from the crocodile's stash. The crocodiles keep their fish in a, in a barrel, for some reason, on a rock. He manages it, but a bird immediately steals the fish, so Poop kind of got what was coming to him in the end. Yeah, alright, we get it. Oh my god, we understand, okay, we understand. Oh, oh my lord. I'm serious right now. He's, are they ser are you serious right now? That shot right there took 27 seconds to convey what could have been done in what, six? 
And then after that shot ends, there are 12 frames of pure blackness. You might say this is intentional, but to me that seems more like an editing mistake, or just really bad editing in general. Look, all you gotta do is drag the two clips together, and then, and then look, the dead space is gone. Editing tips with IHE. You're welcome. There's another four hour long dream flashback, which is incredibly boring. Then the boys go for a swim in the morning. $230,000. Poop saves the panther from a rhino attack. Honestly, what on earth is happening? Watch out for that rhino, little talking Tom. Luckily, Poop saves him, and there's a groundbreaking battle. Oh, whoa. I've never seen anything this cool in my life. I guess the hyenas take Poop to meet the rest of the gang, where they introduce a bunch of new characters. How do you do? If you need any advice, I'm your man. I've been around for quite a while. Okay, then. I'd watch your back if I were you. Always be alert. If you don't want to become a tasty meal for someone. The stilted, awkward delivery and animation makes this so gloriously bad that I simply cannot look away. I adore it. That really highlights the importance of good sound design, doesn't it? They play American football for three minutes. That's, that's the thing that happens in this movie. Really justifying that running time, aren't you boys? But then Poop needs to do a poop. Where might a gentleman of the jungle go to make a poopy loopy? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the hyenas take him to an ant hill and he does a poo in it. But ants go everywhere and he has a dance because... That doggy got ants in his pants, baby. Look at him go. Woo! Are you enjoying how none of these scenes are connected in any way and how there is... No story whatsoever. Let's throw another one at you. Watch how watch how long this shot goes on for. I'm so sorry, but I, I I just have to make you experience the misery so you can understand it. They all want to have a little drinky from the nice water, but the rhinos won't let them near it. So Poop comes up with an amazing plan to have the birds fly over and collect some water, but something happens, so they have to stop doing it. I don't know. Do you really care about the intricacies of this movie? Let's just uh, fast forward a bit. Come on, go. I wish someone would make a pair of shoes out of those crocs. Oh, uh, no, no, not that. <laughs> God, definitely not that. Right, right, yeah, yeah, here we are. Poop designed some kind of plumbing system to harness the water for drinking, but the dumb idiot didn't realize that the rhinos could just follow the pipes to get to their hidden location. Absolute moron. So, what I'm about to show you now, in all my years of covering awful movies like this, is probably the worst sequence of moving images ever assembled. Take a deep breath with me, because you need to be ready for this. Okay, let's do it. How not to execute a dramatic sequence by Life's a Jungle 2012. <laughs> no! As in every animated movie ever made, the main character falls out with his friends and has to go out on his own. And he winds up with a group of female rhinos who he convinces to come back with him. Are you gonna be okay, little one? And then they have a party. 
Pip. 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 Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. Poop meets his family one last time and decides to stay with the animals. And then the movie ends. Probably one of the worst things ever burned onto a disc. Life's a jungle, Africa's most wanted. What more is there to say? It's actually a pretty conventional story for an animated movie, but told in the most inept and badly paced and ugly and boring and unprofessional way possible. When I first watched this, I thought it was kind of funny compared to what these are normally like, but uh, who cares, honestly. Well, luckily, it came with the downloadable activity kit, which I've been completing in my spare time. Alex, come down for dinner. Mum! Give me a second! Your dinner's getting cold! Mom, I'm trying to complete the Life's a Jungle downloadable activity kit that was included with the DVD! Calm down now, or you're grounded, mister! Mom, I swear to God, if you don't let me finish this maze! Right then, what's next? Puss in Boots of Furry Tail. Please don't be me. Please don't be me. Yes. It's not me. Now let me introduce you to Ralph the Movie Maker, who's going to instantly ruin the perception that this is random with his opening joke. Puss in Boots, A Furry Tale. The only reason I picked this movie is because furry was in the title, and I was shocked that Adam didn't pick it. That's seriously the only reason I picked it, was to make that joke. Fortunately for me, this monstrous hunk of shit is only 38 minutes long, not counting credits. That's me, Puss. Actually, the name is Rusty. But Russ in Boots didn't fly with Charles Perrault. Okay, so we're 20 seconds in and it, the movie's already a lie. His name is Russ, but Russ in Boots doesn't sound as good as Puss in Boots. And then we gotta listen to this asshole talk in a horrible French accent for, I think, 20 minutes, it feels like. He was hoping for some dough, and I'm not talking about the kind you need, get me? He tells this whole story about the, the king and the queen and how he had to save the king and queen from, like, whatever. The whole movie could have been that story and it probably would have been more interesting, but it also probably would have taken more effort and been more expensive. So instead it's just like a prologue. Because the rest of this movie, as you will see, takes place in four locations because they didn't want to draw a lot of backgrounds because that takes time. And why would anyone spend time on this movie? <laughs> Fucking bestiality already. We're one second in. We're introduced to location number one. Get used to it, because at least 20 minutes of this movie's in this location. Then there's mice. <laughs> they also didn't want to spend time making walking animations. So every time someone walks in this movie, it's just like shot from their waist up because animating feet moving is hard and movies aren't supposed to be hard to make they're supposed to be easy i mean look at the revenant great movie that movie was really easy to shoot <laughs> so now we're in location number two the jail cell we spend another 10 minutes in this location i don't know how to say this oh sure you do you just said it what this that's how i say this me too ever think we might all be saying this wrong no, no, not literally how I say the word this. Great. This is location number three. The only thing that happens here is like the king talks to a guard, and I think he's having an affair with the queen. They didn't even want to animate this conversation, so they just had shadows. And then the other thing that happens is a pigeon delivers mail to the king. Yeah, but he just wants some cat. Did you know in medieval England they had mail like this? <laughs> yeah, dude. They had letters and signatures. And it's so <laughs> yeah. They had envelopes back then. Don't you know? They didn't roll up the paper and put a little seal on it. They had to put it in a fucking envelope. Oh my god. Look at the design of this entire scene. First of all, this guy looks like garbage. I mean, look at the candle. The flame isn't moving, and like the color is going off the line. You could have just gotten any kid who likes coloring books to color this movie and he would have done a better job. What are these colors even? It just looks disgusting. Oh great, we're back here now for another 10 minutes. We get it. Oh buggers, we didn't find the key. Epic fail. Yeah. The thing I hate about this movie the most is if I was a kid watching this, I would be so utterly bored. 
I mean, obviously no one gave a shit, but every single scene is overly long because they have to pad out runtime. There is no visual comedy at all because that requires effort to animate. Every single scene is two blocks of wood standing like this, straight. Sometimes they move their arms and their head a little bit because that's easy to animate. And they just talk. They talk and talk and talk and talk for 10 minutes to pad out the runtime. And then the scene is over. It's so lazy. I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, at least I was expecting 3D animation like the actual Puss in Boots movie. She turned me into a pussycat. Worse yet, she made me French. <laughs> What is this shot? Who drew this? What, what is that? They couldn't even animate the cat coming out of the cage. They couldn't even animate the door opening and the cat coming out because that takes too much effort. And again, movies are supposed to be easy. You know, that's why Mad Max is so great. That movie was really easy to make. Oh yeah, now we get to the sword fight. You ready for this shit? Two against one? Oh, that's not very fair. You might want to get one or two more on your side. <laughs> they probably spent weeks animating this. You know, they didn't even design new knights. They didn't even distinguish them. Clearly the same model, just copy and pasted. But somebody spent time animating this. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did, dude. Look at it. Dude, this looks like total shit. They barely move. They barely move. And there's two sets. I mean, there's yeah. a prison set and there's a dining room, and that's it. This is so fucking better than, like, cheap... Like, there's a team of people who still work on this. Ugh, God. I to say so. Why do I even try? When I could just throw together a bunch of garbage in two days and then put uh, Shrek on the cover, except it's not really Shrek and I call it Breck. Onions have lands, it dances my swamp. Onions have lands, it dances my swamp. Onions have lands, it dances my I could just do that and probably make millions of dollars, but instead here I am, sitting in my room, trying to make good stuff. Not always succeeding, but trying. And now we're at the dinner scene. No joke, this scene is 15 minutes long. Everyone just explains the plot. Uh, we're still here talking. I don't even know what they're talking about. They've been talking in this room for 10 minutes. And then Russ and Boots fucks eight pussies and the movie's over. I mean, it looks the same as any other Cartoon Network show. Hey, are you blind? Okay, so moral of the story. He... Executive producers, which means they spent 10 bucks on it. All right, they spent 20 bucks on it. These are all fake names. <laughs> Blind Lemon Music. Stock music. Sound design? <laughs> what sound design was there? This guy did nothing. There were like 10 slide whistles, dude. <laughs> Who's the animator? Yeah, I want to see the animation team. Backgrounds. You mean all four of them? Prop design. What the forks? What? Oh my yeah. god! I fucking <laughs> told you you can't make something like that alone. Like, even it's, if it's total it's, shit. So, if you actually want me to talk about this movie as if it's a real movie, it's actually pretty good. I mean, I know I've been negative so far, but... Really, it's a good film for kids, and that's the most important thing, because kids aren't as judgmental as us adults. I mean, we're cynical. We live in the age of, you know, Donald Trump and all this sexism and racism and, and horrible terrorism and all this crazy stuff. But an innocent young kid watching this movie, I think he'd have a great time watching a cat and three mice and some fucking guy who looks like a question mark talking for 40 minutes about things that don't matter at all. The voice acting's great. But how are we ever gonna find the key to spring puss from the bucket? The animation's cute, if not simplistic. <laughs> it 
it's a good movie for kids. I think kids will have a great time watching it. I give it a 10 out of 10. So that is my review. Um, Little B. Yeah, and of course it's me. You know what? Screw the wheel! I'm not just gonna do Little B, I'm also gonna do Plan B at the same time. Two B movies at once. Let's go! Why you'd ever want to ride off the success of B movie? I will never know. But the BR studs over at Bright Spark Entertainment and Spark Plug Entertainment. Bright Spark. Spark Plug. It's kind of weird. Both seem to think it was a great idea. They both even have the exact same tagline. Plan B says, The sting is in the tail. And Little B says, Watch out. There just might be a sting in the tail. I hope the people responsible for this feel the same pain that I do after reading that. It's not even a good pun. I'm gonna break it to you now because I can't hold it any longer, but Little B is my least favorite out of all these goddamn con jobs in this video. I already kind of hate B-movie on its own. It's just dumb and isn't a very good premise for a full-length movie. So take the incessant, never-ending B puns from that movie, then take an ugly Bratz doll and a B and shove them together, then make a 50-minute movie out of those dreadful ideas. Wow, who would have guessed that that's the ultimate recipe for a disaster. I'd be so ashamed! The entire thing has this really annoying static in the background. With me? Can't somebody else handle this princess? Well, it is the queen's job to instruct princesses how to behave, your majesty. So it actually gives you a headache. Little B breaks new ground and actually hurts to watch. You a <laughs> you come away damaged. It is 50 minutes of torture. Oh, and the way B Nard arrogantly provokes you on the box. Well, that especially makes me want to hurt him. Oh yeah, the main character is called Beanard. Come on, laugh. Why are you not <laughs> laughing? The story was about uh, saving the hive, probably. But I'm sat here trying to recap the main plot, but every time I have to look at it, I get an acute pain in my left eye. So I should probably stop talking about it. Ultimately, Little Bee isn't that much different to some of the others. But with the ugliness and the sound and the running time, I just don't have the strength. I don't have the strength to withstand it. Problem is, this one, it's not even funny. It's just nothing. It is so incompetent that even simplistic things such as cuts or very basic simulated camera movements just look wrong. For example, just watch these few seconds and you'll understand exactly what I mean. Also, because movie, they shove in a couple musical numbers that non-surprisingly, completely suck. Plan B isn't exactly much better. Ralph mentioned in his segment that at the very least his pick was suitable for its audience. Plan B should never be seen by a child. I expect even plenty of adults will be traumatized by this one. Your queen's sleep was disturbed! I kind of appreciate the fact that they tried to design the bee with a cute happy-go-lucky smile and adorable little tooth, but then you look down a bit and you see his disgusting insect legs, and it kind of makes the whole thing even more disturbing. The director of this film is also responsible for the Cars Life movies, as well as an Ant's Life, which is also in this video. So treat that information as you wish. Obviously, that was nothing but bad news to me, because Cars Life, especially the second one, is one of the most unfavorable pieces of media I have ever witnessed. Plan B is unsurprisingly pretty much the same stupid garbage as Little B, boiling down to the same plot about the Queen Bees. Or whatever. It's so weird and creepy when the bees stick their tongues out to have a drink. And Villain Queen in particular is especially badly designed and disturbing. The animation is so lazy to the point where they somehow make it look like the bees are on green screens in an animated movie. This is simply because they couldn't be asked to design and model intricate 3D environments for the bees to fly around in. So instead they just use panning 2D images most of the time. The only real thing of note that happens is an incredibly well choreographed fight scene which utterly blew my mind. <laughs> In that wheel, I'm so fed up of talking about bees. Oh great, more insects.
Oh, thank God. Chris can take this one. So when Alex contacted me and he said, hey man, I'm a fan of your work. I was like, hey, I'm a fan of your work too. He said, would you like to do a collaboration? And I was like, yes, that would be great. What do you have in mind, good sir? And he said, DreamWorks ripoff films. So thank God for that because that's what I've been dreaming to talk about for ages. So excited to sit here and talk to you about an ant's life, also known as Bug Bites and Ant's Life, because that was the original title, you know, <laughs> before it was distributed, because <laughs> this movie actually got distributed. Here's the DVD that I bought with my own money. I supported them. I'm currently sitting in my hilariosity background, and for anyone who's not subscribed to my channel, you wouldn't know this is where I film reviews for movies I find hilariously awful. There's tons of films back here that I'm not ashamed to own. Films like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or Jaws the Revenge. Really terrible movies that have an entertaining vibe to them. Posters like Batman Forever or The Happening. Not ashamed to have this set because it's fun to talk about bad films, but I can tell you that when I ordered this piece of shit off of Amazon, I actually got chills up my spine <laughs> because I was supporting them. But at least I have something to talk about before we get into this marvelous piece of entertainment, this DVD. I am immediately drawn to the tagline, what really goes on in your backyard? So I'm curious, is this a statement or is it perhaps proposing a thought-provoking scenario? Like, an ant's life, what really goes on in your backyard? Is it saying that, that this is what goes on in your backyard? That? Right there? Or is it saying, like, what really goes on in your backyard? Watch our shit film to find out. It's not easy being an ant. Just ask Thang? Could they have picked a harder name to pronounce for children? A weary worker ant who's building an anthill for Queen Joe, saving Sal Caterpillar from the rapacious? Rapacious, aggressively greedy or grasping. So let me reword that for the nice children who pick up this film having no idea what it's about. Saving Sal Caterpillar from the greedy geckos and gathering seeds for her hungry sisters. Poor Thang's only got six legs! <laughs> it seems like, like the person just was like, Poor Thang's got six legs, bitch! <laughs> Fuck. But is she spending her time wisely? Are Thang's overtaxed antennae missing danger signals? <laughs> oh my god. Join this intrepid arthropod and her quirky sisters as they embark on an action-packed adventure in an unpredictable, tough neighborhood, the backyard. Man, this is gonna be damn good! I am so fucking sold right now, I am ready for an ant's life, oh my god. If you liked an ant's life, you will love a car's life. You know, that's probably true. If you actually like this movie, you're probably gonna really dig a car's life. So you should go buy it because I'm sure it's really good. I'm sure it's excellent quality entertainment for you and your children who don't know how to read yet. Also, keep in mind, the total runtime is listed as 60 minutes because we're gonna get back to that later. What the fuck is inside this thing? Oh my God, it looks like it's from the dollar store. Is it a DVR? Yep, <laughs> it's a DVR, <laughs> you can tell. It's been printed in somebody's house. <laughs> Somebody made this shit in their house. <laughs> and it's the most obvious ripoff of Pixar's A Bug's Life and DreamWorks' Ants. Even the title font kind of looks like the Ant Bully movie. I mean, it's just a gigantic cornucopia of other things. 
created by someone who's like, I have no talent. So I'm just going to make something that someone else made and try to sell it. And I fucking bought it! In fact, from now on, I don't really feel like referring to this as a film because it's so incredibly shitty. So I'm just going to refer to it as an audiovisual product. And it's just so bad that I'm basically reduced to talking about a series of moments that are funny because there's nothing else to talk about. Like, for instance, how the ants say hello. It's incredibly sexualized and very disgusting. Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Thang. Thang. I am absolutely blown away at the quality of the animation. It's some of the worst I've ever seen. It looks like someone slapped some clay models together and somehow gave it a digital glossy sheen. And right off the bat, we already have some culturally awkward dialogue. Lizards from Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if this thing wasn't insufferable enough already, we're greeted with this strange, jazzy, symphonic score that basically is put during every single scene transition where we see flowers dancing to the beat. And for the four ants that are in this audio-visual product, you can basically sum up all of their dialogue with this. Oh, 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 oh. Queen Michelle's old nest? Hmm? Just abandoned it last Friday. Hmm. The fucking caterpillar walks with his ass. I get what they're trying to animate. They're trying to make him look like he's going smooth across the entire frame. But it doesn't look like that. It just looks like he's going... <laughs> they can't even take the time to properly animate the way a caterpillar would eat. Like this shot of him trying to eat this leaf. And nothing's breaking off. The food isn't going into its mouth. It's just... <laughs> and no nothing happens. <laughs> The incompetence level on display here is mind-boggling. I'm telling you guys, it's fucking mind-boggling. Uh, uh. Oh, fuck. Enjoy this, children. Dismemberment, body parts, decapitation, the eating of a loved one. The editing on display is sometimes so bad, they actually stop a scene's animation before they cross dissolve into the next one. In a few weeks, everything will be perfect. It's all going according to plan. I'm sure a lot of you watching this edit. You know how easy it is to remove a few frames from a shot, then put your cross dissolve. That's the easiest fix ever, and they can't even do that! Pathetic! We're also greeted with a considerable amount of egg shitting. Eggs. And they never try to make it look respectful for the young kids who are probably watching this movie. The ants just run on screen and go like, oh, pooped an egg. <laughs> they also reuse the exact same sound effect of them walking over and over. And if that wasn't annoying enough, here we have this same fucking sound used endlessly for this fucking ants gasping. <gasps> the Could you even have just done something else? Just, I mean, the guy's right there probably filming this shit. He's at the microphone. All I gotta do is be like, hey, Johnny, you know, maybe do a few more. What's that? Yeah, do a few more gasping. Well, I don't wanna do that anymore. You're not paying me. Yeah, well, fuck you. We're making this for kids. It's for the kids. Yeah, but you're not, you're not paying me anything and I need to feed my children. My children need money. Just do it again, Johnny. No, I don't wanna do it. Bye. You have to reuse the same thing over and over again. That's my revenge to you. So eventually we learn there's a betrayal going on behind the scenes and this queen ant is actually just using the other ants to help her gather her eggs so they can hatch and she can have her very own army. And they all start fighting. And that is how you shall die. Never! <laughs> 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 
What the hell's going on? Like, this is- what the fuck is going on? This is how they said hello earlier. Apparently it's how they fight as well. I like how the one's just slapping her ass. <laughs> this eventually leads to her army in a gigantic line, just advancing towards their death willfully. Oh my god, everyone's just fucking dying. It's a line of death! Stop going forward, you fucking bugs! You're all gonna die! <laughs> oh my god. They were just plowing forth into those geckos' mouths like they were happy to be there. They just, they wanted to go forth to their deaths. They were all very depressed about being in this film, and uh, suicide, I suppose, was the best option for them at that point, which I guess is what they were all planning. <laughs> How is this a backyard, by the way? What really is the purpose, though, of a children's film besides just being entertaining and fun? I would say probably to have a moral of some kind, a message that helps you raise your kids and helps them be better people. What's the moral of an ant's life? Don't trust someone who says they're your sister because they might be lying to you to force you to do hard labor? That's a very complex message for a child to understand. <laughs> Eggs. And last but not least, remember I said the back of the DVD said that this audio-visual product is an hour long? It's 25 minutes long, actually. That felt better. Alex, thank you so much for having me in this video. I had a great time talking about an ant's life. I did not have a great time watching it, that's for sure. But it was an honor to be here with you and a bunch of other really respectable people. Thanks, guys. If you've never subscribed to my channel, please do check it out. I like talking about films. A lot better ones than this. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Spin the wheel and see if my wounds are given time to heal. Shopkick Panda. Well, here goes. Can't be much worse than the other panda movies I've seen. Chopkick Panda, being an obvious Kung Fu Panda ripoff, is surprisingly okay? It's completely harmless, childish entertainment that doesn't overstay its welcome, but at the same time never elevates itself to anything even remotely noteworthy. Again, for some reason, the running time on the back is wrong. It says it's 66 minutes long when it's actually 41. But I'm not complaining, I'm actually thankful for that, it means there's less to talk about. The animation is just as lazy as Puss in Boots a Furry Tale, and that's because it's made by the same team that diarrheaed this video out. I personally preferred the art style in the Puss in Boots one over the somewhat clinical, lame, and cheap flash animation vibe I got from this one. But it's pretty inoffensive. You know, at least the panda looks like a panda and the tiger looks like a tiger, okay? That's more than what I normally get with these. I gotta note that I actually got these films in a triple pack with Chopkick Panda, Puss in Boots, and Tappy Toes, which I guess is a ripoff of Happy Feet, which isn't DreamWorks, so I didn't even bother watching that one. It was just cheaper to buy the three at once than buy the two separately. The funniest thing of all is the fact that the synopsis for Chopkick Panda on the cover has pretty much all the information wrong about the real contents of the video. It says the main character is called Lou, when he's actually called Zebo. So fierce was this warrior, no one dared to utter his name. Hey Zebo, stop daydreaming and keep mopping! Also it says that Lou owns the Taekwondo Dojo, when in actual fact, he's a janitor who works there. You can tell a lot of people really cared about this project. The story itself is incredibly simple. Zebo lies to his son and tells him that he's an amazing fighter when he's actually just a janitor, and eventually has to tell him the truth. Then there's the villain who lives in a cave who sends a panther to get a special amulet that's supposed to be really powerful or something. But then the bad guy shows up himself anyway, and after a big battle it turns out the amulet is actually powerless, and the only power it gives you is from what has been inside you all along. Ah, although well, I'm pretty sure they just stole that note from Kung Fu Panda. 
but whatever. You've probably noticed that much like Ralph pointed out in Puss in Boots, the team who made this designed the entire project around having to do as little actual animation as possible, which is obviously a problem when your so-called movie is supposed to be... animated. Go! Oh! <laughs> Go! pretty boring, but I'd be fine with my kid watching it if I had one. And I know that being a con job and everything, I really shouldn't expect anything less. But I gotta say, it's kind of scummy how they use what looks like a 3D render of Zubu to give off the impression that it's a CGI movie instead of a 2D one. Also a bit of a nitpick. You can't just put a little badge on your own cover design saying NEW without any context. It's like what Nintendo did by calling New Super Mario Bros. NEW Super Mario Bros. Sorry guys, it ain't really new anymore. Came out over a decade ago now. I guess the reason these ones aren't quite as bad as the others is that the director actually has some experience and expertise in the field of animation. At least all of this has led to him directing 36 episodes of Tom and Jerry, which is something, I guess. It's about the only good that's come from this. Spin that damn wheel, baby. Ratatoying. Oh, no, no, I was really dreading this one. Please don't be me, please don't be me. Yes! Have fun, Adam. Hey everybody, how's it going? Once upon a time, some loser named I Hate Everything asked me to be on a collaboration video with him. The Not DreamWorks Collection is obviously what you already know it's called. He gave me a list of films I could choose to cover, and on that list was Ratatoing. And so obviously I picked that because it looked amazing. Uh-huh. Now on the list he gave, the films in parentheses were Ratatouille and Flushed Away, to imply that this film is a ripoff of both of them. Now I already love Ratatouille, and I would call it my favorite Pixar film. But Flushed Away was a movie that I'd never seen, partially because it looks like shit, so I gave it a watch, and man was it boring. But after watching it, I kind of felt that there was nothing really about Flushed Away that Ratatouille was trying to emulate. I mean, it kind of came out around the same time, I guess. But if Ratatouille is ripping something off, I'm pretty sure it's Ratatouille, which is a Disney Pixar film and not a DreamWorks film. Just wanted to get that out of the way in case any of you guys were like, hey, that's not not DreamWorks. That's that's not Disney. But I'm reviewing this film anyway because it's really funny. Just wanted to let you know who to blame for that one. Hashtag blame Alex. YMS was a good boy. Hashtag YMS did nothing wrong. Hashtag I hate Mars bars. Hashtag Durplan. So after watching the film's trailer and seeing just how quality of a film this would be, I decided I was going in dry and bought the actual DVD from Amazon. And I'm glad I did. I mean, just look at this craftsmanship. <laughs> Not only do we get an English version, but we get a Spanish version as well. It's just like Cool Cat. But for some reason, they didn't bother to include subtitles in either language. Sorry, deaf people. You can play the program, you can select the chapter. Five whole chapters? Wow, each of these images tells me so much about which chapter I'm selecting. Does this chapter not have mice in it? Is the final chapter just the first chapter again? Oh look, we even got some supplementary material. Web link. Huh. Peter Pan, this disc contains a link to Peter Pan when used as a DVD-ROM. To access this link, open the disc on a computer with a DVD-ROM drive and double-click the file peterpan.htm. What?! Why don't I just type in the URL? Alright, Peter Pan. To access Peter Pan, click here. All right, enough of that. Let's see what this movie's about. Ratatouille. Ah! Oh, okay, so this whole thing takes place in Rio de Janeiro. I should probably mention that this film was made by Video Brinquedo, an animation studio from, you guessed it, Brazil. Pretty much everything this studio does is basically just plagiarism. This is the same studio behind many classic films such as The Little Cars, Little Bee, Little and Big Monsters, and The Little Panda Fighter. Why don't you just call this one Little Ratatouille, or Ratatiny? The Marvelous City. Land of sun and heat. Part of me feels as though they originally had this set in a different city, but then changed it after this guy read his lines. It seems like they just cut it out and then started the movie right after. The Marvelous City. Land of sun and heat. 
with one of the most beautiful urban skylines in the world. I don't know, that describes a few cities, doesn't it? This is a prosperous city. That's where our story takes place, in the heart of this city. Oh, this city, okay. Also, you gotta love this audio editing. In a very famous and sophisticated restaurant, frequented by the most notable residents of the city. It seems that everyone, even from distant places, wants to come to this restaurant. Oh god, this padding. So anyway, the narrator explains that this story takes place in this city and that we're at a restaurant called Ratatouille, owned by Marcel Toying, who only uses the finest ingredients and everybody fucking loves it. At which point we are immediately fed the exact same information again from characters in the movie. For 12 fucking minutes! Oh, and by the way, this entire film has a runtime of 40 four minutes. I am not even kidding, over a quarter of this film is just reiterating the same information that we were already fed from the narrator in the first minute. As I was watching this film, I was legitimately unsure as to whether or not they would ever leave the fucking restaurant. Oh, I must say that smells delicious. Did you have any doubts, sir? There's no doubt about that here. Indeed, this restaurant is very good, Maria Lice. You are absolutely right. Oh, were you questioning my good taste, darling? <laughs> no, 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 no. Won't you please offer the chef my usual compliments for tonight's exquisite dinner? It's marvelous. Uh-huh. I would also like to send my compliments to the chef. I must say, I agree that this food and the service are both wonderful! Thank you, sir. Young man, I'm impressed, and you should be proud! I've never eaten such a fine meal! At least we are treated to some absolutely breathtaking animation. You know how some video games with a shit ton of dialogue basically just run the mouth animations through a program that essentially guesses what it's supposed to look like? It's like that, but much worse. I wish I could say that the original Spanish audio track looked any more in sync, but it's not. Este restaurante es muy bueno, Maria Lice. Tenía razón. Oh, estabas cuestionando mi buen gusto, querida. <laughs> no, 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 no. What the fuck is happening with their noses? There's something strange over here. What seems to be the problem, sir? I ordered the flies with gorgonzola sauce, and this is definitely camembert sauce. Haha, <laughs> you get it? It was like a bait and switch because your expectations would be that the guy was complaining about the fly in his sauce, but actually it was just the wrong sauce, and the fly wasn't actually a part of the mistake by the kitchen staff. Hey, wait a minute. This waiter looks exactly like the guy that was ordering food not too long ago. Hello. Ah! Who the fuck walks like that? Are you trying to seduce him? Well, at least the dialogue is much more riveting now that we're in the kitchen. So far tonight, I've been asked to make 12 olive creams and soda. So, is it ready? Well, almost. Precisely! That guy always ends up ordering the same thing. I'm glad you know the ordering habits of your clientele. Hmm. Ah! Junior, you really need to stop eating the junk food. It's not healthy for you. Have a heart, dear. Let the boy have what he wants. Yes, Daddy. I love cheddar. Yes, Daddy. Thanks, Mommy and Daddy. I hope you all enjoy your wonderful dinner. Stop winking at people. What, so now you want to fuck the little boy, too? Are you, like, floating as you walk? Oh, no, it looks like this guy's got some sort of erectile dysfunction. As I'm going through this right now, I cannot tell you just how eager I am for this film to get past the 12 minute mark. It is literally just all padding. How is any of this useful information at all? Wow, am I crazy or have we been busy? I'm getting no rest. I've never seen it so busy. I haven't either. So as it turns out, there's a table of rats that work at a competitor restaurant that are desperate to find out what the secret ingredients in his food are. Is there a secret ingredient used? And if so, we'd like to know what it is. Oh no, not that same old question again. You must tell us, tell us. Hey, why do you have a notebook here? Um, this is just a little notebook that I always carry around with me. This film is so lazy that they didn't even create a skin for the back of the notebook. It's just the front of the notebook, but reversed. Greg, I am struggling to understand your tooth situation here. I don't get it. Hey, we made it out of the restaurant. Oh my God. Oh great, more information that was already revealed to us earlier. I love it. You know, I thought he was gonna reveal the secret. You mean our little secret was almost revealed. Anyway, now the restaurant's closed, and apparently since it's Thursday night, our main characters need to do something special. Come on, Greg, it's time! Mm. 
What the fuck is going on? This is like some weird video game shit. Gotta love how Greg is essentially just wearing a Mickey Mouse hat. I wonder if they gave that to him just as a little extra fuck you to Disney. Yeah, that's right. What you gonna do about it? I love how they completely gave up on the idea of animating him putting on the hat. Like, they pretend that that's what he's doing, but it's not actually happening. Honestly, it would have been pretty funny watching his real ears clip through the hat as he's putting it on, though. Apparently, somebody thought it would be a great idea to add footstep foley for this sequence, making it delightfully awkward. <laughs> Then we cut back to these guys and we learn basically nothing again. What the hell is happening here? Anyway, now we get to see their secret mission. Hey, shh. Why'd you do that? Wait, never mind. We don't see their mission just yet. We're cutting back to these guys again. Apparently they left their notepad there and are trying to get it back before anybody finds out that they're trying to steal the secrets of the restaurant. But oh my gosh, no one's there. And apparently they just leave this fucking restaurant unlocked, I guess. All right, now we're actually on their secret mission and apparently they have goggles that can show them where fresh food is. Strawberries, big beautiful red ones that smell incredibly fresh and delicious. If you can smell it, why'd you need the goggles? Marcel, take Take your time. We need to make sure we haven't been followed by anyone. You know, a really good way to make sure you're not being followed by anyone would be to lock your fucking restaurant when it's closed. Anyway, Marcel uses a grappling hook to get the strawberry, but suddenly... <laughs> Seems like there's a really easy way to fix this situation and you're just not doing it. So anyway, this character awkwardly walks through their kitchen and somehow knows about the secret panel and into the void she goes. Meanwhile, Greg is somehow so stupid that he makes things a lot worse for everyone. And somehow they also manage to make this sequence as padded as possible. Push the switch! What switch? They push the button behind you! Did you say pull? No! Not pull the button! Push the button! Are you saying button? Yes, button! I mean switch! Did you say button or switch? The button is a switch! Ah, uh, what switch? Oh no, now she knows that they get their fresh ingredients from a regular human kitchen. <laughs> Huh? Come on guys, let's go! Why on earth was that scene transition even there? Was that for some sort of commercial break or something? You know, I'd almost consider that a possibility, but then they do the exact same thing 15 seconds later. Everything is spinning. Why? Well, anyway, it seems as though they have enough fresh ingredients for the entire week, so their work here is done. I hope Otavio remembered to lock the front door. Hmm, let's see now. Greg asked me to do something before I went home, but what was it? Oh, great, what a hilarious flashback. Let's drag this out as long as possible. I think I had to go to the store. But which store? No, that's not it, because there's no store open today. I think I had to, uh, move the tables and clean the floor. That's it. But I've already cleaned the floor. No, no, that can't be it. Hmm, what am I forgetting to do right now? Hmm, ah, I don't get it. Ah, hmm, let me think about this for a while. Hmm. Anyway, these guys recap the entire scene we just watched and then decide they're going to try and sabotage Marcel Toying from being able to get new ingredients. I am just now noticing how disgusting this guy's tail looks. Think you might want to get that checked out? Anyway, they go to the place where Marcel gets his ingredients from and we finally get to witness this magnificent plan in action. Two. Three now. Am 
am I on drugs right now? Well, at least this whole sequence is an excuse to repeat as much of the same footage as possible again. Anyway, they do their little dance and immediately start terrorizing the patrons of this establishment. And no one even seemed to notice them up until this point. So this entire choreographed dance that you perfected achieved absolutely nothing. This place has become overrun with rats! <laughs> What the heck caused all this mess? Rats, sir, but I don't know how they got in. I like how this guy's voice is just the narrator from the beginning with an effect that lowered his pitch. The rats came in and made our customers go completely crazy. How did we suddenly get rats? We always are so careful. Maybe you should close your fucking door. Well, it's time for this scene to end. Let's see how this next one plays out. Okay, boss. <laughs> I can't wait to see how crazy they get after they discover the incredible mess we made. We're so bad. <laughs> That was literally the entire scene. They faded out from the kitchen to the rats and then faded out again within eight seconds. Why? So anyway, it's a week later and now they're planning on doing their secret mission again. This time, Greg needs to be more careful. Uh, what are you saying about me? Easy, Greg, it's nothing, nothing. Yeah, let's not be honest with him and raise our concerns or anything. Let's just allow another life-threatening disaster to happen. Does Greg even help at all? Now we get the exact same shots that we've already seen in that one sequence before, except this time, it's later in the movie. <laughs> well, they finally get there and it looks like there's traps everywhere. Hey Marcel, are you okay? The food is attached to a trap! No shit! Anyway, he finds a bar of chocolate, but it seems as though it's giving him some trouble. Oh my god, that is some grade A nightmare fuel if I've ever seen it. Can't talk now! <laughs> oh my god! Why can't you move like a normal cat? Oh wait, it's probably because it would be a little more difficult to animate, never mind. Anyway, this absolutely disturbing and obnoxious chase scene continues until Marcel manages to get back on the rope. <laughs> What the fuck? Then the scene fades out and then fades back in to the exact same setting. Why? I love how this cat apparently can't climb shit. One week later. You may bring out for me the lentil soup with mushrooms. I'm sorry, but we're out of that as well. Were you previously making that dish with strawberries? Now these rats are gloating over how empty the restaurant is. And Marcel and the gang are realizing that the only way to save the restaurant is to go back and try to get more fresh ingredients. And you know what that means. Looks like these guys are following them. Like, apparently you didn't even wait until the restaurant closed this time. Hey, big monster! Where are you? Come and get me! Here, kitty, kitty! Here, kitty, kitty! What are you doing, Marcel? Why are you calling the cat? You're nuts! Calm down, my friend. I have everything under control. Oh, so you have some sort of crazy plan, but for some reason you didn't bother to run that past anybody that you're with? Okay. So Marcel's like, yo, we should just grab all the cheese right now. It looks like the cat's not even here. There's no sign of him. What? Uh, hold on there, big guy. I think we started our relationship off badly before, if you know what I mean. Relationship? Relationship. What's a relationship? So Marcel decides he's just going to continue distracting the cat while they get as much cheese as possible. But then he gets impatient, I guess, and throws shit at the cat, and then the cat gets pissed off. Then they run around a bunch, and it's really boring. <laughs> Ugh! Seriously, who the hell would write a scene where a cat stops chasing something just because it went on a table? Oh, thank God, finally, it looks like the cat's figured it out. Meanwhile, these guys have backpacks full of cheese now, I guess. Give us everything you have in your bags and make it quick. And we do mean everything you've got. But why? Don't you think there's enough cheese here for all of us? Go get your own, but watch out for the traps! You're absolutely right. Didn't really think this one through, did you? Anyway, then they start arguing. You better show us some respect, you lowlife rat. Hey, you don't call my friend a lowlife. What are you going to do about it, chubby? Ooh, we've got ourselves a sassy girl here. No, you didn't. No! Uh, okay. So you're the cat whisperer now. Great. Grab these two and take them to your boss and see how proud he is of you. 
<laughs> He'll give you a big reward and you'll have me to thank for it. Oh, cool. So you're gonna kill him. Great. A few moments later. How did you get him to want to cooperate with you? He's your natural enemy. Well, I had a homemade snack in my bag. I offered it to him. He loved it and he wanted more. I thought you were out of fresh ingredients and your food started sucking and that's why you went here in the first place. So rat traps aren't needed here anymore. No rats will dare come around while our cat's on duty. Yeah. So now I guess the cat's protecting them now. Now the cat's just hanging out at the restaurant getting food like all the other rats. I heard those rats of ours were sent to an out-of-town laboratory. Oh, you know I miss them so much it just breaks my little heart. Be patient, my friend. I love how this film supposedly intended for children is ending like this. Yeah, those two guys from before, uh, they're missing and nobody knows what happened to them, but supposedly there's a lot of scientific experiments that people are doing on them. They're being tortured, yeah. Like, it's either that or they're dead. Anyway, they've all had a magical adventure and it's pretty cool that they're friends with the cat now how do we end this movie let's just have greg say his signature catchphrase not once but twice precisely <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the movie. You can all die happy now. What a delightful experience. Thank you so much, Alex, for encouraging me to watch this amazing feature film. Check out my channel for more cool memes. I'm gonna go to bed. Goodbye. Ah! Moses, the Prince of Egypt, is a weird one. On one hand, it's what your teacher at Sunday school would probably show you on a long rainy day, but then it's also the kind of dirty cash grab to tie in with the movie of a similar name. The animation is all over the place. More work has gone in compared to the previous 2D animations in this video, but you still have terrible shots like this. <laughs> Maybe it's time your big brother taught you a lesson! <laughs> which seem to show a complete lack of understanding of what perspective is. The backgrounds are actually quite good, but the character design is pretty simple to the point of looking kind of goofy at some points. I don't need to go into the story because it literally is just beat for beat the story of Moses and how he parts the Red Sea with the help of God to free all the slaves. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually existed before the DreamWorks one and was thrown together with a new cover just to cash in on the new one releasing. Speaking of the cover, it's probably the worst thing about it to be honest. Whoever this is just straight up isn't in the movie. I guess it's supposed to be Moses, except the design in the movie is completely different. There's the odd funny moment, like how stone-faced they are about the staff turning into a snake. The staff had transformed into a beautiful snake. I wanted that magical snake staff for myself. And how they made the incredibly strange decision of showing the entire story from the perspective of Moses's brother? My name is Amun. I am the grandson of Ramesses II, Pharaoh of Egypt and the most powerful man in all the world. The voice acting is also gut-bustingly atrocious. His quarters must have been the only place in all Egypt to be free of those wretched frogs. But it kind of adds to the charm of the whole thing. Clearly some hard work went into this, and it feels a bit more sincere and professional than a lot of the other bargain bin garbage in this video. Not much more to say than that. I had to spend close to a tenner to get my hands on this one, which definitely wasn't worth the 48 minutes of ironic entertainment. But you know, swings and roundabouts. No idea why the cover is in German, but the movie audio is in English. Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Much like anything, because life holds no meaning when you're locked in a room watching seven and a half hours of rip-off DreamWorks movies. So this is the bit where I nicely conclude what we've all just been through. The time to wind down. I might as well order them from best to worst. The best is probably the Moses one, followed by the two other 2D animated rip-offs. Then Life's a Jungle purely because it's so comically bad that it's weirdly enjoyable. And Ant's Life can go next simply because it's so short, followed by Ratatoying, Plan B, Little and Big Monsters, and finally, Little B. You really know what you're doing! Which can burn in hell. I guess the word little is the key to terrible. Make sure you tell me in the comments which one you think looks the best and the worst. I gotta thank Adam from Your Movie Sucks, Chris Stuckman, and Ralph the Movie Maker for helping me with this incredibly daunting and time-consuming task. You can find their channels by looking in the description or just searching their name. What more is there to say about the movie equivalent of those YouTube videos with misleading thumbnails that ultimately have very little to do with the original bait? Some people say that DreamWorks are kind of the B-Tech version of Pixar, so what do these films count as? The B-Tech version of a B-Tech? God, there are too many layers and I'm too tired to comprehend anything anymore. Thanks for watching, everyone. 
and I bet you can't find any other rip-off movies for me to cover in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye.